<laughs> Call a sort of white cowboy jacket. Our MC for the night is Peter Dennis, a man who more than 40 years ago actually stood where he's standing now in the middle of the Albert Hall and sang as a boy of 14, Ave Maria solo. Peter Dennis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main contest in Mickey Duff, Terry Lawless promotion. It is an international heavyweight contest of 10 rounds, three minutes each round. Introducing from this corner, from Philadelphia in the United States of America, the 1984 Super Heavyweight Olympic Champion with 15 wins and only two defeats, Tyrell Biggs! And it's fair to say the Biggs look sleek and fit. And in the other corner, wearing red shorts, with 31 consecutive victories and 30 inside the distance, the heavyweight champion of Great Britain, Gary Mason! Clear to see that Mason, British heavyweight champion, has already captured the public imagination. At the weigh-in at 12 noon today, big scale, 16 stone, three and a half pounds. Mason scale, 17 stone, 10 and a half pounds. Your timekeeper for this contest from Harrow, Peter McCann. And your referee from Hartley in Kent, Larry O'Connell. And O'Connell will bring two very big men to the centre of the ring. They weigh 34 stone between them. Biggs will be conceding exactly a stone and a half to Gary Mason. It's very much a make or break night for the pair of them. If Mason can't beat Biggs, then all the great international aspirations are up the spot. And if Biggs can't beat Mason, then he surely is on his way out as a big time boxer. Is Mason ready? Seconds out for a man round. of Biggs quality. We shall soon know. Biggs in white. Some three to four inches taller than Mason, but conceding a stone and a half. Biggs is not renowned as a heavy puncher. He's noted for boxing skills. He cuts badly. Both eyes have been cut in fights in the last three or four years. Mason carries the big dig, and Mason is already going looking for it. And Biggs has been known to wilt under heavy pressure. Well, it may be the biggest test of Mason's career, but he's come out looking as though it's uh, just another fight. Biggs will be working behind the long left lead. That's his principal weapon. But he looks wide open to punches. And of course, Biggs is a man with a history of drug abuse and alcohol. He's thrown all that off over the years. But that must surely have left its mark. Biggs has had only two fights in the last two years, and he's lost them both. One to Mike Tyson, and the other to Damiano of Italy. And he got cut in both fights. And Biggs is very slow to move out of the way of the attacks. His hands are very much faster than his feet. Boy's look that Biggs came into the ring with has disappeared. Yeah. 
made some moving around this ring on those huge legs. And he mustn't let Biggs get set with the jabs. Biggs confident. and pushing all his 17 stone 10 into the attack. And Mason glares at Biggs as the bell goes. And that was a pretty confident start by the British heavyweight champion. And the Albert Hall is alight with excitement for him. Gary Mason, 26 years old, there's the check. Won all his fights, and look how many he's won inside the distance. But of course, the quality of opposition has not always been quite as classy as it is tonight. But if he does well here tonight, he could be on the way to supplanting Frank Bruno as the number one heavyweight in Britain, because what nobody knows is whether Frank is going to go soldiering on as a fighter or as a showbiz performer. Terrell Biggs from Philadelphia, great city for producing good fighters. Joe Frazier came from there. Seconds out, round two. Mason streaming water from his face. And Biggs trying to get himself into an easy, relaxed and rhythmical boxing movement. of course was the Olympic super heavyweight champion in Los Angeles in 1984. He had 15 successive wins as a pro Biggs before he went in with Tyson. Tyson put him away in seven and he's only had one fight since against Francesco Damiani. Good right hand from Biggs and that stung Mason. Mason very nearly lost his head there. Mason frowning, scowling with concentration. So far, Biggs has taken Mason's best punches quite well. He has been known to go under when the pressure gets really hot. slightly cut in training a fortnight ago. If it had happened a day or two later, this fight might have had to be postponed. And the left jab of Biggs is beginning to find Mason's face. That's a thundering right hand for Mason. Biggs takes it well. Seems clear enough that Mason came out believing he had the power to sweep Biggs away. Hasn't quite happened that way. Of the two men, though, Biggs is the one breathing hard. Six feet five inches, this man. Terrell Biggs. 28, as you can see now, and as I said, he had those 15 successive wins and was regarded as a, a top-line heavyweight prospect until, of course, 
the inevitable happened. He went in with Mike Tyson and was stopped in seven. Not a bad performance, though, to go seven. Well, there was one uh, useful right hand from uh, the American here that uh, shook Mason. There it was, and that uh, stung Gary into uh, an onslaught of action. But again, Big seemed to take the punches or rode them well. Both men's faces heavily greased. Mason, of course, yet another fighter out of the Terry Lawless camp from the same camp as Frank Bruno. And, of course, he's lived for a long time in the shadow of Bruno, Mason. And that hasn't been easy, but now he holds the title that Frank never fought for, the British Heavyweight Championship. He's already made one successful defence of it. is hurt he looks most dangerous and at the moment the long left lead of Biggs is still doing its work keeping Mason at arm's length where he needs to have him setting up a big attack. I don't know whether Biggs is foxing or fooling, but he's trying to make some signal. Oh, he wants, he's trying to tempt Mason to come to him. He's fooling around. He's pretending to be badly hurt. Biggs fighting open mouth. He's been breathing hard now for two rounds. And looks as though, looks as though the going is tough. How much of that is real, how much is put on, I'm not sure. Biggs beginning to swipe with the right hand, not putting him in accurately. But the left jab, which is his principal punch, he doesn't have much of a right. But is the left enough to keep Mason away from him and to stop Mason doing a lot of damage? He's beginning to clown Biggs. And the left and the right still come thundering in on his head. It's round three. some round and there were moments in it when Biggs I think it was fooling or maybe he was hurt and trying to convince Mason he wasn't hurt it's all very difficult to say but suddenly the professional edge went off Biggs fighting and he began to clown and that's usually a sign that a man is in a bit of trouble Frank Black on the left Terry Lawless in the middle and over on the right hand side George Francis terrible trio but what a succession of champions they bring to the ring like round four coming up And of course, well used to fighting American opponents. He uh, usually finds very little else. 
He fought his first American opponent in 1986, a man called Charlie Hostetter, and uh, they've mostly been American since, and most of them haven't lasted very long with Mason. But here we are in round four, which is a little further than Mr. Mason is accustomed to going. Big starting the round com confidently again behind the long left jab. Mason's got to find a way inside that. Might just have to step the pace up a little. He mustn't let Biggs dominate with the left hand. Mason has eased off his work and he's allowing Biggs to settle down behind the left. And Biggs clowns again and says, that right hand hurt me. Oh dear. Well, you know, he's putting his tongue out of Mason. I hope this isn't going to deteriorate into a, a farce. One or two hefty punches from Mason will stop all that. Mason's work has slowed right down. Hardly throwing a punch now. Either he's taking a breather or he doesn't quite know what to do. He had a period like this against James Tillis when he came through in the end. But certainly Mason is going to have to step the pace up. Because if he allows Biggs to settle down, Biggs will outbox him. That was not a good round for Mason. But then uh, we've got a man here who can probably uh, give us a better opinion. Frank Bruno is yeah. here ringside. What do it's, you think of it? It's so easy to talk from this side of the ring, Harry, you know what I mean? <laughs> and this is big 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 tests you know I mean it's a bit rocky at the moment but he should sharpen himself up because he's a very good boxer and right. if you let him get confident he gets very cocky and he starts jabbing out and starts clowning why do you think like Gary he's... why do you think Gary's eased off a bit I'm not too sure most probably he's paced himself out he's looked for the big bombs and he's just mess when he's hitting um Terrell Biggs with him and he's just messing around he's messing up his confidence so he's got to pace himself out and save himself Harry it's so easy for me and you to talk over this side. Absolutely We should right. be in there, you know, taking the couple you of blows. You should be in there, but I Yeah, should. that's right, Harry. You should be making the tea. You don't think he's worried? You don't think he's worried about uh, he can't quite get to the man, do you? No, he's a slippery customer. I think, I hope he gets to him pretty so shortly, Harry. Thank nice you, Nice speaking to you. <laughs> A lot of money to get me out there, I can tell you. Well, you heard what the big man said. Mason's got to step it up a bit. He's got to dominate. He mustn't let the man in white settle down and find his boxing rhythm. And it's quite clear the way Biggs is moving at the moment that he's gaining in confidence by the minute. It's not Biggs' first appearance in this country by any means, actually. He first came here uh, way back in 1981 as an amateur and boxing Gloucester for the United States against England. And he beat a man called Adrian Elliott who, uh, strangely enough, has since become a professional stablemate of both Mason and Bruno. And then he was here again in 1986 at the Alexandra Pavilion in London, and he boxed his fellow American, Robert Evans. Well, Big stopped him in five rounds, but he wasn't very impressive. In fact, neither, neither man was. So, uh, this is a little more 
impressive showing from Bigson on that night. against the ropes and hammer him it might change Mr Big's mind about things now he's thrown him over that's a stone and a half advantage that did that unless Biggs is getting very very weak on his legs the big melon slice grin on Biggs face that would have put a lot of inferior opponents away are bouncing off Big's head. He's taken Tyson's punches, but he's in trouble now. And Mason, when he does, really throw the bombs. He looks as though he's going to destroy the man, but... Biggs is still dancing. And still flicking the left arm. And Biggs was very glad to break it off. He was thrown over in that round. And I think that was a sign of weakness. And he looked very, very glad to get away from Mason at the end. He's trying his best to conceal it. But he took one or two unsteady steps back to the seat. Terrell Biggs, 28 years old, who's managed by a woman. Uh, he wasn't in his early days, but he's had some managerial disputes. And a lady called Leslie Roncari from Windsor Locks, Connecticut, who's a racehorse owner and breeder, is now his manager. She's not in his corner, but she's sitting there somewhere near him. the lady in question, Leslie Ron Carey. Well, this might be the moment for Mason to go all out. It's a good one to start with. much on uh, a bit of talent and a lot of kidology. won his British title against Hugh Roy Curry with big right hands and he defended it against Jess Hardy and finished that with a good right. Biggs makes another little try as he gets hit in the body. really mustn't allow him to do that. Round six. Mason swallows hard. So staring at his man intently. But throwing far fewer punches than he was in the first two rounds. Which 
one wants it most. Mason needs to get through with a lot of big rights. As he's never going to outbox him. Power simply has to overcome skill here if Mason is to win. Biggs has the last word on the left hand. As Mason goes back to Terry Lawless once again. Mr. Bruno, sir. The you haven't been boxing recently. You haven't I, been boxing, I've been the... ducking and diving. You have been ducking. Harry, can't duck we talk and... about this fight? Wait a Millions of watching. You're, you're, you're going to duck and talk. dive into pantomime. Yeah, right, yeah, the end. Christmas, end of now, Dece the beginning of December. So next year, any yeah. chance you might just get back into the ring and give us a, a, a look at you again? Yeah, I think if you let me warm up with you. <laughs> Start off quite with seriously, you first, yeah. Quite seriously, do you fancy boxing again? I think so, Harry. I'm 27, going on 28. You're young. 27 and a half. very young. Going on 28, and I think I've got to do something. Don't mature right. until they're 28. And you won't let me nick your job, so I've got, I've got to do something, Gary. <laughs> so we might see you in the ring yet, right. eh? I hope so. Thank you, Frank. Exclusive, Harry. <laughs> Round seven. So, we're quite a long way into this fight now. Four rounds to go, including this one. is the round that Tyson put him away. So the little ambition, if it was there, of doing it faster than Mike Tyson, that's no longer available. One of the interesting things so far about this fight is that uh, Big's eyes have stood up to whatever punishment they've had to take, and he certainly has suffered with his eyes over the years. really has got to step it up. He's getting more and more lethargic. And Biggs at this moment looks far the livelier of the two. Biggs is a man whose best days were thought to be behind him. But at this moment, Mason is by no means certain to win this. There hasn't even been the threat of a knockdown yet. Mason getting anxious signals from everywhere to come forward. Look as though he's sold out. Desperate right hand. No, no direction in it. Looks as though it's almost too much effort to lift the arms now for Mason. Keep him trapped where he is and work on him. But I don't think Mason can put too many punches together consecutively now. Run seven. It's all about determination and who's going to stick with it. Oh, he's got it with a right hand. He put a short right hand in. And I think the bell's gone, but the count will continue. And he's out. He's counted out. Just when Mason looked as though he was on the point of letting the whole thing slip. 
He let a short right hand go, the one he'd been looking for all night. And there it was, and suddenly Terrell Biggs was spread all over the floor in the seventh round. And that's precisely the same round in which Tyson did him. Here we are again. The left went through, and that little right hand went crashing through between the gloves. That was not a big, long punch. That was a beautifully delivered, and one of the, the best timed punches, perhaps the only really well-timed punch that Mason had thrown through most of the fight. But it had the desired effect, and the man in white suddenly was spread eagle. And so, Mason has pulled a famous victory out of the fire, because quite honestly, I thought he was on his way to defeat. He looked to be getting slower and slower. He hardly seemed capable at the end of throwing more than one or two punches. But in the end, he produced the one that mattered, and he got rid of the man who'd been taunting him. So Gary Mason has very firmly tonight put himself high into the international rankings. He was ranked world number 10. He might well go up a place or two after beating Biggs. Ladies That's and Biggs' third successive defeat. Tyrell Biggs, having failed to beat the count at the end of round seven, the winner, Gary Mason! Gary, well done. Uh, it seemed to be slipping away from you a little bit just before the punch came in. No, well, I did predict before that because he's such a very good boxer, it'd be hard for me to really get to him that easily. Um, the first two rounds went better than I thought they would, but then in the middle, he started like, he stopped fighting and started more defending himself. And that's when I said, if he started defending himself, he'd make it hard for me, which he did. But as I said before, it'd be just a matter of time before I got to him and got to him I did. Before the right hand happened, your earlier punches didn't seem to have that much effect on him. No, they were hurting. Every time you saw him faint or make a noise, he was hurt. That's how the Yanks do it. They tried to put you off. He was talking to me throughout the fight and trying to put me off, but it made no difference. I was concentrating on what I had to do, and um, I'd done it. Maybe not in a way I'd have liked to have done it, but done it, I did. You certainly did. What's next? Um, I think you'll have to bring Terry in, but before you get away, Des, thank you, everybody at Henlow Grange, for making my stay such a nice day. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done, Gary. Just one quick word with Terry. What do you feel about that? Um, I, was, I was a little disappointed in the middle there because he was so... He looked to me like he was so much on top. But it's very easy from where we were. I mean, they were really big punches coming from both sides. And at the back of his mind, you know, that the long distance, which he's not used to, tremendous fight for him to learn from. Uh, you know what the public wants? You know what the public wants, of course, don't you? Pardon? Mason Bruno. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I knew he wouldn't answer that. And my dad jumped.